Welcome to DOS Geek. I know it's not fair. GPUs are not in anyone's hands. It's so hard to find one. It took me a year to finally be able to check out AMD's new GPU, but it seems like supply is starting to come back. I actually found this on the shelf at a micro center. If you want more of the story and how all that went down, check out Hardware Addicts, the podcast I'm a part of. But we're not only going to talk about the 6700 XT, we're going to talk about fitting it in a TU150 mini ITX build that I have. In addition, we are upgrading from a 3700X to a 5800X CPU. So you're going to see all that here. Plus, we're using an Arctic all-in-one cooler, all in that little lunchbox, as Michael Tunnell likes to say. He calls it the little lunchbox, the Leon Lee TU150. Then I'm going to show you some of the impressive benchmarks that we're getting out of this, and I'm going to talk about what Linux distros work out of the box with all of this new hardware and which ones fail the test. We're going to do all of that right now, so stick around. Look at this beautiful card in all of its glory. This is before we rip it out. We rip out the Arctic and we, well, we're going to keep the Arctic, but we got to pull it off to put the new 5800X in. And of course it has the 3700X pictured here, which you can't see because it's under the cooler. And we've got the 6700 XT, which barely, and I mean barely, an index finger left of length between the front of that case and the end of that card into the Leon Lee TU150 Mini ITX build here that Michael calls the lunchbox. So I had to take out all the fans and kind of angle it up towards the power supply and slowly bring it back down at an angle to get this thing to fit in the case. But I did get it to fit. The next problem I had is, of course, your LTS Linux distros. They don't boot with this thing. So you're going to have to either go out there and get like a Fedora respin, one of their latest refreshes or additions out there. You're going to have to get something like Garuda Linux, the latest Manjaro Linux, or a rolling release like OpenSUSE Tumbleweed in order to run this card. Any of the LTSs, elementary, won't work with the exception of Pop! OS. Pop! OS does amazing things with hardware enablement, and I tested it, and sure enough, of course, Pop! OS boots. So they always seem to be getting the hardware enablement in before anybody else. So those are your Linux distro choices if you want to run this card out of the box. But of course, Garuda Linux uses the Linux Zen kernel, so you're going to get the most performance possible, I think, out of that distro. So consider checking that out. Now let's rip this baby apart and start doing some upgrades. This is the really fun stuff here. First, notice that long black bracket. What that bracket does is actually keeps the GPU from bending. I'll have a link to it in the show notes down below, but that can cause damage to your PCIe slot over time, or even your GPU for that matter, if it's bending, because the weight of these cards is so excessive. So that little bar kind of keeps it propped up, keeps it from bending down. The things that we have to do here is take out the radiator. Thankfully, I did not have to take out the 6700 XT again because it was some real acrobatics to get that thing to actually fit inside this little case, but it does and we made it. So we've got to remove our radiator and of course we've got to take the pump here off. Now you notice I mounted the radiator to the back of the case and not at the top of the case. I couldn't get holes to align for the top of the case here. And with these little ITX builds, you gotta do the best you can. So that was the best method that I found. Here we're gonna remove all of the prior paste and then we will put new paste on top of this, new thermal paste once we get it cleaned up. And I'm just using little alcohol wipes there, but you can use Noctua actually has wipes made just for this. And I ran out of them and I love them. They just make cleanup so easily. The next best thing is these little alcohol wipes here. And of course, we put the new CPU in and we're remounting the cooler here. Now, this cooler, I do not like the way that it mounts. There's a little metal bracket and the only way to hold it up, that little Motorola box you see in the right, the blue box in the right-hand corner, I put that underneath the bracket on the other side of the case to hold that metal bracket up so that I could screw in the all-in-one cooler. And that's the best way that I found to do it unless you have somebody there to help you keep their hand kind of underneath while you screw it in. It's kind of a pain in the butt, but really this goes to show you, you can fit all of these parts, which I'll have a link for into this tiny mini ITX build. And this thing is so powerful. This little computer that has a handle on the top that you could carry to land parties with your friends, or if you're going on a trip and you want a more powerful PC with you, it's very, very easy to carry along. And right now 
we're going to show you just how powerful this little mini beast can be. So you can see in the top right hand corner, we're clocking in at nearly 200 frames per second. Now, a couple things to take note. Number one, I'm in 2K here. So this isn't 1920 by 1080 gaming. This is 2K. And we're also recording in OBS at the exact same time. So all of those things obviously are going to put more pressure on this build. But the amount of frames per second we're getting in ultra mode in 2K is just insane out of this mini ITX beast. It's also important to note that nothing in this machine here is overclocked. I haven't done any tweaking yet, any overclocking. This is just how it is stock, which is absolutely amazing. In addition, what I want to show you is how well this cooler is able to maintain the temperatures of the system, which just shows you how efficient this all-in-one cooler really is in this combination of parts in the fantastic case, the Leon Lee TU-150 is just amazing. So it's getting late into the night, but there's one more thing I want to share with you because it's not all about gaming. A lot of times people are looking for being able to develop games. They're looking for video rendering, image editing, and those type of things that they want to do with their machines when they're building a powerful machine like this. So I turn to Blender's benchmark tool here. I absolutely love this because it gives you a very real world application outside of just a very powerful game, gaming computer. And you can see this is the benchmark result that I ran on the 3700X. This is before we upgraded it. And we came in the top 60% of anybody else who had benchmarked. And those are some of the results and other machines that we were paired against. And you can see the different types of renders that we did, the different types of images we were running a render on, including Victor, which is one of the hardest ones at 760 here. Uh, seconds that it took for us to actually render that. Now, when we go to the new CPU here, you can see we instantly gained 10%. But one of the beautiful things about this particular setup that I have is the combination of the 5800X and the 6700 XT working together on that PCIe 4.0 bus and seeing what things it can develop. So now when you pair in that 6700 XT and you run these and that benchmark, you're down to 394 and we're in the top 27%. Again, this is without any tweaking, overclocking, or anything else. It's just such an impressive machine when you think about it being stock and in it's such a little package. It's one of the most powerful mini Linux machines, ITX machines, I think ever built. If you know somebody else who's built a Linux specific machine that's this powerful, let me know. I'd be interested to see it. But a lot of this too is because of the great software, the great operating system that's running in the background. And there we give a huge thanks to Gruta Linux with the Linux Zen kernel and all the performance tweaks that they're doing to get us this incredible performance out of the box, out of Linux. How beautiful is that? So I wanna give a huge thank you to all of you, all of the patrons out there, all of those listeners, to Hardware Addicts, to Destination Linux, the people who are subscribed to this channel, I love your faces. Without you, all of this fun stuff that I get to share wouldn't be possible. I hope this encourages you to go build your own machine. If you've never done it before, it's such an amazing experience, and it will really teach you how each of these components work and appreciation for how amazing this technology truly is that we get to use each and every day, and you'll understand how it works from a whole different level. And if nothing else, a few of my videos in the past, people have said have inspired them to get into hardware and start building their own PCs. And that just, that warms my heart, truly. I absolutely love it. So thank you. Big, huge thank you to our sponsors, DigitalOcean. Go to do.co slash DLN and check them out. I was just playing with this new service I was talking about on Destination Linux last week called Cirques. It is basically a meta search engine that is open source, completely private. If you think about where a lot of your personal information gets taken from, it's from services like Google and things. I was able to quickly drop a LEMP server, get Engine X up and running, and get my own Cirques instance up and send it out to my patrons so they could play with it too. All thanks to DigitalOcean. It was just a couple clicks to get my server up and running. And then the rest was doing all of the settings and things within Cirques itself. And that's what I love DigitalOcean for. It's another fabulous place 
where they have thousands of cloud agnostic tutorials. So even if you're not using them, they still provide all the tutorials that will work for other services because that's the kind of cool people they are. So go to do.co slash DLN and check them out. Get your $100 free credit by going there. Also, of course, we're sponsored by Bitwarden, which is the greatest password manager on earth. And it's the password manager I used before they ever became a sponsor. It is open source. They have third party auditors that come in and check the security of their source code to make sure they're doing everything they can possible to keep your passwords safe. Go to bitwarden.com slash DLN and check them out. And we will probably be doing some more amazing videos. I have a really amazing new network system that I have set up for my home Wi-Fi. I cannot wait to share what I've done there with all of you because I think you're going to be blown away by it as well. Please leave your comments below. Let me know what I should do next with the little mini ITX beast build. Let me know about your builds that you're doing. And until next time, get out there and fill your brain.